that's the Semmelweis reflex. That's what it is. Now, how do we avoid the Semmelweis reflex? How do we avoid this idea uh, of uh, poo-pooing, of degrading all new ideas without consideration? Well, I've thought of a few and I've taken a few from theory. How to avoid the Semmelweis reflex? Well, we need to eliminate compromise. So eliminate compromise. So many people today can't change their public view because they're financially compromised. Uh, they're being blackmailed by other forms of compromise. I've heard of politicians, for example, being photographed in compromising positions. And this is used against them. So we have to get rid of this compromise. We have to eliminate vested interests. All vested interests must be eliminated from decision-making processes and positions of truth. We need to eliminate dictatorial organisations or individuals. So we cannot have a situation where an international organisation, for example, is saying, this is the truth, you say this, you do this, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. Or someone who might be, I don't know, maybe someone who's a, a billionaire saying, you know what, I'm going to control truth. Or someone who's a politician saying, you know, I'm going to control truth. This isn't for you, hoi polloi, to apply scientific rigour to truth. Oh, no, 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 no. Truth is what I say it is. Existing when I say it does. And, I mean, I'm putting it satirically there, but this is, this is what is happening. This is how bad things were in the past and have become again today in many areas. We need to get rid of control. Uh, we need to control active suppression of new ideas. So a lot of new ideas are actively suppressed. Actively suppressed. That's an interesting idea. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pay some academics, academics in inverted commas, to write a paper to prove you're wrong. And you know what? You can do that. You can do that. Academics are sometimes prepared to compromise their principles because they're getting paid a lot of money to do it, just the same as other people are, sadly. So new ideas are actively suppressed. Maybe ideas that would save lives. Maybe ideas that would save money. Oh, no, 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 we can't have that. We can't disrupt the status quo. We can't disrupt my profit margin. Let's actively suppress that. And let's use the mechanism of governments and international organisations and philanthropists and the academic establishment and papers and journals to do that. These are the tools of the warfare that can be used. So we have to get away and stop the suppression of new ideas. We don't want the suppression of new ideas. Um, except new ideas that, uh, that do not make a lot of money. So I, new ideas that don't make a lot of money are often rejected. We should be accepting new ideas, even if they don't make a lot of money. We shouldn't automatically censor new ideas. There's so much censorship at the moment. We need to get rid of the censorship of new ideas. They need to be open and freely discussed. We need a dialectic. Thesis needs to be presented. Antithesis needs to be argued. A synthesis must emerge from that. This is how science progresses. It's how everything progresses, really. And uh, certainly how all intellectual things. But these are just not intellectual. You know, the idea that you wash your hands in chlorinated lime solution. Yes, it's an intellectual idea. It gets rid of the, the uh, streptococcus. But hey, it saves lives. Slightly more than academic. Need to stop censoring new ideas. Don't allow new ideas to be uh, labelled as disinformation. Disinformation? Oh, that's disinformation. Who says it is? My fact checker says it is. It must be disinformation. I paid a fact checker and they say it's disinformation. Therefore it's disinformation. Therefore you're wrong. Maybe you can think of examples of that kind of uh, reasoning that have occurred. Plenty of fact checkers available around the world. Available for hire. There's some good ones. There's some not so good ones. So let's get rid of this term. Let's just start... Yes, let's stop this pejorative use of words like disinformation. Let's be open-minded, new ideas. Let's carefully evaluate new ideas on their merits, on the evidence, 
Follow the evidence wherever it leads, for goodness sake. Let's avoid confirmation bias. So confirmation bias is favour information that is consistent with prior beliefs. So I have a particular belief. Something comes along that contradicts that. I ignore that. Something comes on that seems to agree with that. Oh, yes, I was right all along. There you go. That's proved it. You select the new evidence that you want to believe in to confirm your previous biases. That's the opposite of being open-minded. So we need to avoid confirmation bias. Favour information that is consistent with prior beliefs. No, we want to examine new information objectively. Avoid authority bias. So the example here is doctors are gentlemen and gentlemen, uh, gentlemen's hands are clean. That was Charles uh, Megas, who was from the States. He was an, I think he was an early uh, obstetrician or doctor in the States. Anyway, it can't, it, so you see, it can't be doctors that are causing uh, these women to die because doctors have clean hands. Authority bias. Doctors are authority figures. This is right because an organisation with three letters in its acronym says it's right. This is given from on high. This, this, this information has come from Mount Olympus. This has come from the Oracle of the Gods. This has come from the World Whatever Organisation. This has come from the international group of whatever. This has come from someone who's really rich. This is true because the chief medical officer and chief scientific officer say it is. No. 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 It's true because the evidence supports it. Not because some jumped up so and so says it's true. Follow the evidence, not the man or the woman. Avoid belief perseverance. As we've said, beliefs can hang around for a long period of time. <coughs> um, people adhere to their initial beliefs despite contradictory evidence. All evidence that comes along must be evaluated, whether it confirms our biases or not. Avoid groupthink. Now, I'll just remind ourselves we are still working out ways to avoid the Semmelweis reflex. And the Semmelweis reflex is an automatic rejection of new ideas without giving them full consideration. Examples in the comments below, please. <laughs> so avoid groupthink, where consensus overrides uh, consideration of alternatives. This is the Solomon Ash kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the, uh, the psychology of conformity. The group says this must be true, therefore it must be true. You see, Semmelweis's group, all the doctors, all the group he was in, was in, said he was wrong. He was the lone ranger. He stood up and said, no. No, no, no. You're all wrong. You're all wrong. Aren't you being a bit arrogant, Semmelweis? Those hundred clever doctors say you're wrong, and that you, as one man, saying says you're right. Isn't that a bit arrogant? Shouldn't you line in with the thinking of the group and comply and shut up? Well, he happened to be right. That was the problem. The group were wrong. Groups are often wrong. Groups are often right, but groups are often wrong. We can't accept something just because the group says it. We avoid groupthink. We want to eliminate doublethink. Doublethink is the ability to hold two contradictory ideas in the brain at the same time. And we are remarkably tolerant of doing this. And we have to get rid of these logical incongruences. We have to... Um, Two ideas are contradictory, one of them's wrong. Let's stop holding two ideas in our head at the same time. We want to get rid of new speak, um, another Orwellian idea. So we need to not change the terminology. We need to stop inventing silly new words. I don't know, words that end in phobia, for example. We have to, words need to mean something. And we need to stop diluting that. Otherwise, we've got no modality of communication left apart from drawing a few hieroglyphics, maybe. We need to stop rewriting history. There's a big movement in my country at the moment to rewrite history. 
Um, again, that will lead to erroneous uh, conclusions. History has occurred. It's not open to interpretation. Well, it isn't open to interpretation, but it's not open to changing facts. We can't change the facts of history, as many people would like to do or rewrite history. That will lead to erroneous conclusions, in my view. We need to critically evaluate beliefs that are taken for granted, obviously. We can use guided reflection. What the heck have we done over the last four or five years? What the heck has gone on? Let's reflect on that and work out how to do better in the future. We need to uh, allow new thinking by the elimination of fear of punishment. So um, there's a lot of things I'm not allowed to say um, for fear of punishment. Um, it's the same for you. Free speech has never been as inhibited as it is today, at least in my, in my lifetime. And it has to be said in the lifetimes of uh, older people I've talked to. Free speech has never been as inhibited as it is now in, in your Western countries, I believe. This is a problem. How can we get rid of the Semmelweis reflex to automatically reject ideas if we're going to be punished for even mentioning names that cannot be mentioned, ideas that cannot be mentioned, topics which are not on the table for discussion. The Semmelweis reflex will have free reign if we don't have free speech. Allow new thinking by the elimination of fear of punishment. Let's get rid of the fear of punishment. More free speech to allow circulation of new ideas. I was reminded of the Apostle Paul here, Romans 10, I think it is. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So if we haven't even heard of the new idea, if we're not allowed to hear of the new idea because information is censored, how can we make up our own mind? How is that free will? How is that informed consent? If there's a whole section of ideas that we're not even allowed to put up in opposition against other ideas. When only certain ideas are allowed to be discussed, how can we avoid the Semmelweis reflex running rampant? I'm not sure we can. Right, we need to tell the truth. War is not peace. Freedom is not slavery. Ignorance is not strength. We don't get anywhere by lying. We need to tell the truth. Now, I know this is going on a bit, but I think it's an important topic, so I'm going to do one more thing. Um, we need more what we call, what psychologists call system two thinking. Now, system one thinking is fast, automatic and uh, intuitive, operating with little or no effort. Make, it's useful because we can make quick decisions and judgments based on patterns or experiences. So that's system one thinking, fast, automatic, intuitive. It's just what we've done. It's always what we've done. It's what we've done all these years. It's probably right because we've done it for the last 10, 20 years. That's what the Semmelweis reflex, of course, is. It's rejection of new ideas, accepting the old, rejecting the new. That's the problem. So system one, yeah, it's good for day-to-day -day things. Helps us cross the road, decide what we want for breakfast. But system two thinking uh, is slow and deliberate, conscious, requiring intentional effort. This is what we need. We need slower thinking, deliberate thinking, conscious, requiring effort is what we, uh, is what we need more of rather than simply accepting things. The more we accept things, the more we accept the Semmelweis reflex, the less progress we'll make. It's very simple. A few ideas there. Let me know what you think. Ingans Philippe Semmelweis, 1818 to 1865. His life prematurely terminated by forced incarceration in a mental health facility. 
But to Samwise has been given the greatest accolade that's possible probably to come out of human mouths. He's been described as the saviour of mothers. And if that's all you've got on your tombstone, that's all I got on my tombstone. I'd die a happy man. Saviour of mothers. Not me. Dr. Ignaz Philippe Semmelweis. A few ideas there. Let's avoid the Semmelweis reflex. Let's learn from history. Because we are at a dangerous juncture.